walked away from my dream job that I had been working for for 10 years in DC to move to Philadelphia, like immediately. And so if my friends and family weren't thinking that I was crazy enough, I said to them, I'm gonna be an entrepreneur. But I fell in love with Philly from days walking from the Schuylkill River to the Delaware, to running into my old friends and classmates from Westchester University, and to being with people who are real. And that's what Philadelphia is about. And I was on this search after 10 years in strategy, global consulting, top firms to find me and to see who I was independently when you strip away the big companies and you find out who you authentically are. So I went on this search to find out who I am as a solopreneur. And guess what, guys? When you do that, it's kind of scary. <laughs> And you realize that you need to take a slight step back because entrepreneurism is a huge risk. And so you reflect on that. But when you're ready to be passionate about who you are, what invention you have, what product you have, what service you have, you take that risk. So I was thrilled to do that. And I did it at the cafe around the corner, a good karma cafe, because that's an excellent view. And I established my company, didn't know a thing about it, but it was a little isolating. And I wished I had some of the teams I'd had in the past. So I became a consultant at Comcast. And I will tell you, if it weren't for the opportunity at Comcast, I would not have the technology, the product, and the analytics background that I needed for my next opportunity in entrepreneurism. I had the opportunity to take a San Francisco-based, venture-backed capital firm and bring it to Philadelphia. So I'm going through the interview, and it was less starting to be about me and more about why Philly. Well, I was shocked because I had been living here a couple of years, and I know why Philly. So you make that case to people, and it resonates. And as all of you in the tech community knows, that is a big goal that we need to continue to make. So we brought it to Philly, and we had two months to launch an on-demand transportation company. And the uh, first thing they told me to do was find a co-work space where everything seems to be happening. So I found Benjamin's desk, because that's where I get my hair done. <laughs> and before I knew it, we were launching an office, getting our team in place, and I was surrounded by optimistic, resilient entrepreneurs who were riding the waves of the ups and downs, just like our team was trying to. And not only that, they threw us a launch party of launch parties with the mayor, with press, with enterprise companies, with entrepreneurial communities, and we were amazing for four months in the field until we weren't, until we had to close down. And it's one thing when you're the entrepreneur who loses your job, and it's another thing when you need to tell your whole office that they've been laid off a week before Christmas. At the same time, I was so fortunate to be a part of an innovation community that was authentic, that was resilient, that was optimistic, that was Philly. And it led me to something even greater than I didn't even dream of. So way before I even moved to Philadelphia, President of Penn, Dr. Amy Gutman, had a vision, a vision where Penn can have startups and bring together private sector startups as well and incubate them at Penn Innovation and also bring in venture capitalists like Penn Center for Innovation Ventures and Hershey's innovation arms as clients to talk to them and have amazing things like this FAA regulated drone net that has cool robots flying around all the time. In addition to that, have bio laboratories, have co-working space, have startup garages where the garage that's your wall opens right on up and also a lot of events and programming, so entrepreneurs that were struggling, struggling that I was at the coffee shop, now have a place to go, to talk to a community, and to get that support, and to get that help. And I'm thankful that I joined Benjamin's desk, because if it weren't for that, I wouldn't have been able to grow into a diverse ecosystem of many co-work spaces among Philadelphia. And should you ever be crazy enough to decide to speak at Ignite Philly, you can come to the Penovation Center and practice on our pitch bleachers, which is an amazing architectural design where the windows float out, reaching over the university city and center city. Thank you so much for this opportunity. With Penovation and with Benjamin's desk, I'm so excited to be a part of the startup economy, to bring companies to Philadelphia, to grow companies in Philadelphia, and to keep companies in Philadelphia. Thank you so much.
Bye.